What is up guys, it is Nisho here and I actually have to record this video again because the first time I recorded it, the microphone wasn't on so no audio was recorded and it was pretty embarrassing for me because, you know, I spent all this time uploading the video and a minute later I realized, wait, this has no audio. So, yeah, um, kudos to the guy who uh, went 17-0 at European Nationals, um, making Yu-Gi-Oh! history with uh, Zodiacs. And um, honestly, Zodiacs are a deck that... Um, in the TCG side is still probably the most broken deck in. Uh, Konami tried to hit it by hitting Norton, and it's like Norton wasn't a problem. If, if they think that Norton was the only reason that Zodiacs were good, they obviously were not paying attention to the duels that Zodiac did, uh, as, as I said Zodiac, Zodiac did, and that uh, the OCG side as well. The OCG side made sure to really just stab the deck in the legs and like to, to a point where they couldn't really walk anymore. TCG just, just, just gave it like a little slap on the hand. Um, and they were like, oh, okay, well, there you go. That's it. That's your punishment. Bye. Uh, just just keep going. Well, we're probably going to let you live until link form anyway. <laughs> Since that's kind, of, that's kind of what the OCG uh, kind of did. Like, they, they let Zodiacs stay alive until link format, and then that's when they butchered off and killed um, Rat, uh, Dryden, and uh, Barrage. And then in their most recent list for July 1st, that's when they hit um Broadbull and so Zoo I actually made a profile of Zoo past all those hits. Um it's up right now. I'll leave a link to it in the video. Um but yeah I mean for for now uh in a TCG we still have the broken side of Zodiac and so it's gonna get hit before Link format comes out. I mean it, 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 it like well, you can kind of expect it, but for Worlds, um, Zoos Zoo won't be able to be played simply because um, they're going to be using the OCG format. So you can still kind of play them, but they won't be as strong as some other decks will be. So, um, And, you know, same thing for True Dracos. Like, they're going to have the OCG format where they only have one uh, Masterpiece and one uh, Diagram. So it's going to be pretty hard to play them. So it's going to be balanced out a little more. So we don't know who's actually going to win Worlds yet. So, uh, yeah, let's just go into the Monsters first. Um... Three Thoroughblade, three Whiptail, two Rat, two Ram Ram, uh, triple Ghost Ogre, and a singular Maxi. Uh, pretty standard. And so uh, going into spells, we have triple Tenki, triple Barrage, triple My Body. Um, which honestly, like why? Like I don't know why they kept Barrage and Tenki at three. Like like they can't limit Barrage. They can't semi limit Tenki. It's like the, these are some of the reasons why Zodiacs are a so generic and b so freaking good. Is because they have so many searchers. From Rat to Tanky to Barrage, it's like it, it just feels like it, it feels like the deck has too much right now, and that's why it's probably so good because you know once they start up one, they start up the other. It, it just goes into whole this whole crazy combo. So, yeah, uh, my body is a swag. You know, stop those Dridents, those Ragekis, those Mirror Forces in case people still run it. Uh, double Shuffle Reborn. Shuffle Reborn is a card that most people didn't know exist, <laughs> honestly. And so it's like, it's at this point where like you see this top guy use it and like tech with it. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, he's using Shuffleborn, that's nice. And uh, honestly, it's not the best card in the world, but it does uh, start up combos simply because it does bring back monsters from the graveyard. And you can use the second effect. It's kind of like an into the void type of thing, except it's like uh, you have to shuffle a card back you control into the deck. And then you get to like uh, draw a card and then at the end, and in the turn, you banish a card from your hand. Um, you can use both effects in the same turn. So it's like if you special summon any, like it's just any monster from your graveyard. It's just the effects are negated. So if you Foolish Burial, which this guy actually is not using. So he probably used Shuffle Reborn as like um, either if he got like Ghost Ogre or if uh, like it, like if a rat got Ghost Ogre, and then he could just Shuffle Reborn it. Or if, you know, he drew a mid game and uh, he had no monsters left on board, like his board has just been wiped. Um, he gets Shuffleborn then as well and go into more Azuic Seas. Uh, so one Soul Charge, one Rageki. Double Enemy Control, which is actually real funny because we haven't seen Enemy Control in a while. And Enemy Control is a card that really just goes under the radar. Like, it's it's real decent, but I feel like a lot of people see it as, like, a gimmicky card. And honestly, it's, it's probably the best card right now that can take control of an opponent's monster. I mean, let's think about it. I mean, Brain Control, Mind Control... Brain Control can only take normal some monsters, and Mind Control has such limitations on what you can do with the actual monster. 
Enemy controls just okay. Tribute the monster, you get to keep keep the monster for the turn. Do whatever you want with it, however you want to do it. You know, no restrictions. Just give it back during the end phase if it's even still on the board. You know. So, yeah, I mean, and then you know the whole battle position effect. I don't think he probably used it. He probably didn't use it, but uh, if he did, it's like maybe against a zoo exceed where it's like if my opponent has like a Dryden and it only has like 100 attack because the only a uh, zoo material has on it is probably like a rat, right? And maybe like 200 attack because they have a tanky out. Um, if I enemy controller their Dryden on my turn, um, all of a sudden I'm forcing them to use Dryden's effect on something. I'm, I'm forcing them to panic. The first monster I summon, um, they're, they're probably going to want to pop it because they're like, oh my god, like I, uh, I want to protect my Dryden. Especially if it has like a lot of XT materials on it. If it doesn't have a lot of XT materials on it, then they probably won't try to protect it. But if it does, they definitely will. So yeah, um, so uh, enemy controller, it can also use uh, cards your opponent gives you, like uh, Flying Sea and Kaijus. If you have a Kaiju on your board and you don't want to keep it, you can always just tribute it for enemy controller to take control of opponent's monster, maybe like a Diagosto Emerald. Same thing for a Flying Sea, you can always just tribute it, take control of a monster your opponent controls that doesn't have a quick effect. So maybe not something like Dweller or Tornado Dragon where they might just use it just to spite you or like they like they might use it, chain it to an uh, enemy controller just to say, oh, okay, well, um, I don't want to use an effect, so I'm just going to use the effect on something useless. Like um, if they like if they have a Tornado Dragon, they, they might just use it on uh, like if you have like a dead tanky up, then they might just use it on that instead of letting you uh, use it for the turn. So. I mean, going into link format, I think enemy controller might not be a bad card, but you know, it, there, there's always a thing where it's like, um, it, it's it, it's always felt like a gimmick, and I feel like the ego community will won't ever take enemy controller seriously. So um, it's it's a lot of times where it's gonna fall under the radar. <laughs> Sorry if I'm a little sick. Uh, Book of Moon, I, I didn't actually know people still played Book of Moon. Honestly, um, Book of Moon is something that um, I think is. Uh, I think has always been a good card. It's just it's something that we've seen less and less of Like after it got limited a lot of people just start saying eh I don't really feel like using it anymore and only one forbidden chalice man I, I usually see people max out on forbidden chalice or play at least two and this guy just 17 to 17 O's uh, nationals with just one now We don't know if it was luck. We don't know if it was um just happened to be like he got all the cards that he needed at the right time, or if if he actually uh, decided to put Chalice down to one because he felt Chalice at one was the best ratio. So yeah, but Chalice is, is always a good card. Just you know, negating monster effects. Just do it on a monster that doesn't have that much attack anyway, like uh, a Dryden, and um, you'd be good. So Pot of Desires. I feel like in Zoo it doesn't really affect the deck as much. They really only rely on like one or two monsters anyway. Uh, the rest is really all. Uh, it's not really that important. It's like, oh, maybe if you if I get a hand trap or maybe some back row, that that's really all I need. Uh, so desires is definitely a good choice in twos, um, especially if you're playing over forty. He's playing forty two, so it's definitely not a bad choice on his part. So double cosmic cyclone, um, it's pretty much here because twin twisters. Although in the side deck, I feel like it's it's a better option than twist uh, than twin twisters in the main. Because Twin Twisters, it's, it's more for like trap heavy decks, for, for decks that play like more, maybe like three or four back row every turn. And you know, you realize that and you're like, oh, okay, so I should put Twin Twisters in now. But when you're playing a deck like True Dracos, where they would benefit from their cards being destroyed, you Cosmic Cyclone them and uh, they don't get that benefit. But you know, it can also be used like an MST, it can just be used to chain to like cards like Diagram or Tenki just to interrupt plays while they're trying to do them. So uh, it definitely works like that. Uh, triple Solemn Strike. Solemn Strike is the best Solemn right now. Uh, we don't have Judgment over here in the TCG. And I feel like even if we did, Solemn Strike was still probably better. So, yeah, um, three of those. It, it might get hit soon, but, you know, play three while you can. Uh, warning, Warning has always been a good card. And, uh, you know, might as well keep it around. Uh, Zodiac Combo, just to get those extra Exceed materials on those Zoo Exceed monsters. Um, it definitely does work well with uh, Zodiac Exceeds, like uh, Dryden... If, if you need like Dryden to have more attack, or if you need like uh, Hammer Kong to have more Exceed units, I, I said Exceed units, like Exceed material, then uh, that can definitely work out for you. Um, Torrential, it's a real, it's a real problem card. Uh, it stops your opponent's um, big boards and 
Uh, honestly, it's it's a pretty amazing card. I, I just I just think you know it, it's like ever since people lost vanities, you know, you, you saw people using torrential tribute more. It's like it's something that's really only there simply because I feel like there's nothing better people are using right now. I don't think Trunch was a bad card. It feels like, but it just feels like a lot of people are playing it because they don't see like it feels like the game is lacking another chop card that's like just as good. Uh, and lastly, one dimensional barrier in the main. It, like it, it, it was kind of weird to me because. You can see the two dimensional barriers in the side deck, but um, in, in the like only one in the main, it feels like okay, um, maybe if I play this matchup, um, I might just draw it, and so it might just be good. And you know, if I draw two Dracos, or if I face two Dracos, if I draw into it, it's only just one, so even if it's dead, it won't be dead for too long, you know. Um, I can just side it out game two or three, and you know, it won't be a problem for me, so I, I guess it makes sense, honestly. So going into the extra, it's only 14 cards because uh, Tornado Dragon is missing. So just remember that. So it's all this and Tornado Dragons. But it's it's a real simple extra deck because at least 12 of these, yeah, 12 of these cards are, are Zoo Exceeds. And three of them are Dryden and three of them are Broad Bulls. So it definitely <laughs> it makes sense why they were banned in uh, the OCG because these are like the two biggest problem Exceed monsters in uh, Zoo. So getting rid of these two definitely do um, bring down Zoo by a lot. And uh, yeah, so Dryden, Broadbull, um, Laika, also known as Chalkanine, uh, Tiger Mortar, Borbo, uh, Hammer Kong, Dweller, uh, Digusto Emerald, and a Tornado Dragon. And lastly for the side deck, uh, Twin Twisters, as I did say before, it's something that uh, you, you just play because, you know, in case your opponent is playing something back row heavy, uh, dimensional Barriers, you side those in, maybe for the Mirror Mash, maybe for like Rogue Decks to also rely on like Extra Decks or like Rich Rolls or Pendulums. Um, Imperial Order, um, there are a lot of decks you can side that in against, so, um, you know, it, it's just, would it be worth siding in? You know, because it's only a singular copy, that's, that's really what I asked myself. Uh, Triple Gamsiel, I feel like, honestly, I feel like he could have made the Imperial Order and just, in, instead of the Dimensional Barrier, but I feel like the Dimensional Barrier does could do more damage potentially you know so triple gamsiel um you know kaiju's are always good and gamsiel is pretty much the best kaiju triple ash blossom um stopping plays since whenever it was made honestly i do feel like he could have just played a single ash blossom in main and then just play only like two ghost ogre but um i, I do think his ratios are fine as they are honestly it's just you know, I would have did it a little differently. I'm I'm not saying that I that I'm better than this player. I'm I'm not I'm not saying that. It's just, you know, it, it feels like it feels a, a little weird to me, honestly. Even if this guy did go 17-0, you know what? Maybe maybe that's just the scrub side of me talking. You know? <laughs> uh, and lastly, triple flying C, because you know for the mirror matches and you know for other rogue decks that also may uh, focus themselves on exceed something. And, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, um, so as we saw from, uh, this, this Nationals is that, uh, a lot of the decks, like 40 slots out of the last, out of the top 64 were Zodiac decks and the entirety of the top, of the top eight were, were Zodiac. So he probably had to play a lot of mirror matches and it's probably, and a lot of people see that as like the most skillful thing that you can do, like beat someone in a mirror match, because that means you have a better concept of your own deck. And um, so I feel like the way that he made his deck, it definitely works well in the mirror match. And so um, a lot of the tech choices that he has, like enemy controller um, to tribute like uh, flying seas and dead kaijus and to like take control of like Dryden's to force out Dryden's effect. Um, the single dimensional barrier in the main deck, that, that could definitely do some damage. Um, the like... It really feels like he made his deck to like not only beat the meta, but like to really win the actual mirror match. I feel like a lot of people just make just play zoos to be as as fast as possible, but I feel like this guy was playing zoos to beat other zoo decks. You know what I'm saying? That's probably why he did so good, because you know you, you definitely see that in the way that he built his deck and everything. So yeah, uh, shout outs to that guy, uh, Marcelo something. His name was, I'm, I'm sorry if, if, if I murdered it, but <laughs> um, I don't really pay attention to names in Yu-Gi-Oh! too much unless they really, really, really are a recurring name 
that I hear a lot. So, uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's all for now. Um, again, shout out to this guy for going 17 0 and making Yu Gi Oh! history. And, uh, you know, tell me what you guys thought in the comments. But, you know, if you don't feel like doing that, then uh, see you guys on the next one. Peace.